To get the very latest on this, let's bring in our regional correspondent, Gulliver Craig, who's just outside the Armenian capital of Yerevan. Gulliver, what more can you tell us? Well, I'm in the town of Yegvad, north of Yerevan, just in front of a church where there is a funeral going on, the funeral of the second of the men from this town who went to the war in Nagorno-Karabakh and have been killed. The man was 35 years old. Uh, another man was buried a couple of days ago who was only 20 years old. We're told that hundreds of men from this town have already gone to the front in the east, some of them being called up to join the Armenian army, others volunteering to join volunteer brigades. And even here at this funeral, there were men who were in military, costume, in military um, uniform ready to go to the front today. They feel very, very determined. They say that this is a war against terrorism and uh, the only thing that they could say was that they hoped that this would be the final fight for Armenia but clearly this is a whole country that is very much on a war footing with men being mobilized all over Armenia and the fighting continues in Nagorno-Karabakh and as you were saying that also includes Armenians firing back at what they say are Azerbaijani rocket positions um, inside Azerbaijan. Gulliver, there are many countries in the international community calling for a ceasefire, the U.S., France, Russia. What will it take for that to actually happen? Well, for a real ceasefire and for talks to start, both sides' positions seem pretty irreconcilable. The Azerbaijani side says it will not cease fire until Armenian forces withdraw from Nagorno-Karabakh. The Armenians say that they are ready for talks, but that there's no way that they're going to withdraw their forces because they believe that uh, annihilation of the Armenian population of Nagorno-Karabakh would ensue. However, after those calls from international powers and also from the biggest international human rights organizations such as Amnesty International for an end to the attacks on civilian infrastructure. We do seem to be seeing um, a lessening of the attacks on cities such as Stepanakert, the capital of Nagorno-Karabakh. This morning I, I spoke to one man who was there and he said that overnight it was much quieter. This morning he heard one thing that sounded like a rocket attack but he wasn't sure. It was much, much calmer. Um, and the same for other cities uh, in Nagorno-Karabakh. So at least there seems to have been um, something of a pause at the very least uh, in the targeting of uh, towns and cities. Gulliver, thank you for that. That's our regional correspondent, Gulliver Craig.